Two in Delaware in 1952, they were still they were still uh, uh, paddling people, gaining people. Uh, they, the last <laughs> flogging for a crime occurred in Delaware in 1952, yeah, are, according to the LA Times. Although the state continued to turn a blind eye to the practice for another 20 years. We just got here. Time is 3:30. John and Ken. <laughs> is that right, Michael? You are certainly correct. Am I right? Yeah, certainly. There's a couple people here already. Okay, fry them in and that. There's all the items that are going to go for the garage sale thus far. It's only been a half hour so far. Yeah, what? But, but hopefully, they'll fry them. I just thought you'd be ready. Because, uh, I don't want to. All right, well, just tell her to be ready a minute early, okay? He was supposedly going to shoot a gun today. We have a computer. We'll see, huh? Let's see how goofy they can be. They're goofers. They're shooting inside still. I heard he got a lot of death threats on that day. He did the he did Daily death threats. <laughs> he did a lot I didn't listen to him. I didn't listen to him because I, I knew what it was going to be like. I didn't want to. I didn't want my blood pressure to go that high. So I decided not to listen. He was doing a show on Richard Nixon. And well, I tell you, he didn't get one favorable call. He must. You know, how would it be to think about being him for a minute? How would it be? How would it be to have, you, you, you know, doing a, doing a thing on, on the radio and having people call up and almost everybody against you all the time? I was just going to say, my opinion is, is a lot of that has got to be shown. That can. I mean, you had to, to get the audience, you have to take an extreme opinion, you know, and that's the best way to get audience to take one that's against everybody else. How about how he treated Richard Nixon? That was unforgettable. That was yeah, he was amazing. Uh, he was a real bastard, wasn't he? <laughs> um, I really, en I really enjoyed this segment that uh, Hugh Hewitt did uh, right after Nixon's death because I guess he worked for Nixon. Yeah. Well. And, um, guess who? I used to it was. I, I really enjoyed this his office yeah. building. <laughs> Pardon. Our, pre our previous office was uh, in Richard Nixon's first law office building. Pioneer Boulevard. Go south. Turn right on Artesia. At the second street is Albertus Avenue. It's a big red. Uh, cement factory or something. Is that, is that right? Phil no, was telling me. Something like that. It's a, some sort of a red and white cement building. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, that, that's because Albertus is one of these little streets. It's hard to get to. Milk factory. So if you make your uh, right on Artesia, right on Albertus Avenue at the red and white cement building, and you go down the road and you'll see it's called an unusual punishment. There are some so? golf clubs. I don't. Nobody in this crowd thinks it is. So there's I'm a the only one. Hey, uh, let's go to Tony through. in Los Angeles. I, I first time maybe it's what it is. Go ahead. Hi, They're taking a the phone call right now. Hey, you should come down and visit us. Sure. I agree 100% with Mickey. Yeah, where are you from? Oh, uh, I'm from Atlanta. I'm from India. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do they do there to people? Uh, I don't know about that, but I think... <laughs> there are signals that. registered. Uh, I ain't that classy. Those are for sale. What do they get? Oh, that's what we should be doing with the aliens. Yeah, how many legal aliens do they have in Singapore? Probably none. Yeah, I know, but once you overstay your visa, you become illegal. Yeah. Now, how many are left? We're going to go sign the... Probably none. How many sign the... What's my call? What? They're flying a balloon, too. Any comments? Who's <laughs> 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 going to go? Let's go down. Jack, the owner. People are pounding. I'm not going to 
can sell those on camera. Though. Someone has brought in some floaters and a washboard or something. And an accordion. All right. <laughs> All right. Camping. There's a camping trip. Where the hell is this? Okay. That leg. $29 or save $191 off the Made in the USA Nishiki Pinnacle price to $859 from $1,050. A good reduction. And say you heard about Jacks from John and Ken. Get a free Jacks water bottle and holder when you buy a bike. Here's the number 1 800 200 4 Jacks. Call this number and find out about the Jacks location nearest you. 1 800 200 4 Jacks. 1 800 200 4 J A X. This is the paint man from Hank L. That's her. Yeah. Cool. That's Even a Chia tree has shown up. Okay. We have a whole new genre of TV talk show. Of course, we paddle. We forgot that it may be like a mark of masculinity eventually to be paddled in front of her. Oh, that's a goal. Gee, that doesn't look like a rope tied around the winch. And amongst the other kids, it was really something, but maybe strip down to your undershorts, they're saying, and get a firm paddle. Well, I'll tell you, Ken and I would be glad to host a TV show where we do a weekly paddling. Yeah, really? That would be great. I'll go one further, guys. What I would also say is to uh, protect the children or protect the young adults, whatever, is I'd have it administered by their own parents. Nah. And if the parent doesn't want to do it, we'll paddle a the parent. Well, there you go. I don't know, but Let's you paddle everybody. We want to paddle everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. Fill them all. <laughs> this is, is going to get real ugly. Think of the idea. What? <laughs> what you... <laughs> I'm not going to pull the crowd for every idea. <laughs> oh, okay. But I like it a lot, okay? I like it a lot. Thanks for the call, Todd. Uh, First Avenue. It's a little tiny side. Of course. Of course. Is it on? Yeah. Get the damn camera on, man. <laughs> Tell Jenny. That hopefully I'm recording inside the car. I'll find out right now. All right, all right. Oh, guy just got by. Where are you from? I'm a harmless little fuzzball like Rush, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, uh. And a bottle of Monet Champagne. You got your first on end. Filming, you're filming? Yeah. Mike Nolan in the sky. <laughs> what a trip. Mike from Piper Bonanza. Start off with uh, okay. the lesson. 
said, okay, we're not going to start off in here because it's too noisy. And I'm not going to put a gun in your hand until I'm for sure that you're safe with it. That the basics of the firearm safety that we're going to be here for days. Oh. It's going to take my two weeks before. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the classroom. Let's go to the classroom. Okay. Hey, little boy. Let's have it in. Cameras. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blink in here. Oh, Michael. What? Michael, was uh, Ken Jampo, was he flinching from the gunshots? He's a woman. From us <laughs> shooting on the other side. I'm huh, Mark Lawn. Mark, we're going to show you this in Tennessee, what you missed being out there. They're on the other side over there. See what you did. <laughs> See what you did, man. We brought the little nine out here today. Didn't plan to shoot it, but we decided to join the festivities and uh, it was my, it was my and bad enjoy bad. our Second Amendment right. <laughs> yeah. uh, there goes Michael. Safely operating a firearm, which I had taught him how to shoot. And he will resume firing now. Slow down. Right shoulder's gone. Gonzo, buddy. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Should be out there. All right, I got the gun pegged. He turns around. <laughs> Gonna see this now. There's John. The action cam. The action cam. <laughs> cam. Hi. <laughs> Casey, can you hear me? Oh. So we got two mics working. Can you hold the mic? Oh, okay, so when we're talking, we'd be able to hear Alright, uh, because we can't hear ourselves, but that won't matter as long as you can pick us up. Alright, yeah, you hold the mic. Okay. Well, we're set up here to do it. The issues you really care about, and one of those issues is John Cole. About five more left. You want to do that at the moment? We are at the Insight Shooting Range on Albertus Avenue in Artesia. It is the Friday of the yard sale, but it's an added bonus today. While you're stopping by to drop, have to drop off your things for the yard sale tomorrow, or while you're stopping by to watch John shoot a gun. We are. Now, uh, tomorrow, 9 o'clock, you'll be here, 9 to 3, uh, we're doing the yard sale. We're going to actually sell things and raise money to prosecute the Menendai properly after Gil Garcetti and his staff botched up the first uh, Menendai case. So we're going to be on the air at 9. Rush uh, Limbaugh is going to be preempted tomorrow, and his reruns will be on Sunday morning at 9. So 9 o'clock tomorrow in Artesia, the sale starts, and we want you to be with us because I think we're going to get some press coverage. Uh, yeah, please, and there's a lot of good stuff out there already lined up for the yard sale, so please show up tomorrow. At nine for the yard sale. Okay. Right, now, what are we going to do here now? We're at Jack Solomon, and we're actually, uh, what, what, what part of the shooting range do you call this? This is the excellent shooting part. Uh, All right, uh, so uh, I'm, 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 are you going to turn them off? I've got my 10-minute lesson. Usually it takes two hours. Jack and Preston, 10 minutes. i got a 357 Magnum and in front of me. We've got the gun. We've got a tray full of bullets. How many and times do you think you're actually going to shoot here if you want to shoot? Uh, I don't know. See, you do a whole round? See if it turns me on. One cylinder full. Does he have any automatic weapons fired? <laughs> yeah, I can see you getting carried away with this. <laughs> i, I got all these sick fantasies about that. Right. All right, now... Uh, I guess I'm gonna find out if I get a rouse by this uh, What's uh, next, Jack? Uh, <laughs> All right, Jack, what do we do now? Okay, you're gonna put the Smith and Wesson model 688 revolver on the new left hand. Okay. Fingers, your left hand. That's what you hold the mic. Hold, hold the mic for me, Johan. Okay. Okay. You're gonna put the left hand, put your fingers in the shoulder. No good fingers in the shoulder. Yeah. Now you can turn the shoulder with your left thumb. Okay, that's what I'm doing. My buddy Gary, right hand, he's a total NRA boy. He's oh gonna die. I'm really nervous. My hands are shaking. I can't believe I'm putting a bullet in the gun. Oh, this is really, it's really hey, scary. Hey, Gary, this one's for yeah, you, buddy. Are most people scared the first time they do this? Or are people scared any time they try something new? Yeah, that's a good I'm not just being a sissy guy. No. Okay. What were you like when you first... Because I feel unmanly because I'm shaking. What was it like the first time you broke the ass truck? 
Good. We've got to take a break. It's almost uh, 5.30 here. Mark, are we doing the sheet anymore? Look at you still shaking. Yeah. I love the game. Yeah. I love the game. You know what I keep thinking? I keep thinking of Don Knox as Barney Fife. There we go. I got it. 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 I Wait, there's bullets in there still. Oh, I see. That's the cartridge. See how stupid I am? So the gun. <laughs> We're so close, aren't we? Stimulating talk radio. The You're a good sport, John. Good sport, good sport. So, hey, can we do it? Yeah, thanks. 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 Yeah
one of those rifles really they're nothing but to kill people they're, they're machines to kill other people now i don't disagree with with rifles and that kind of stuff that's for hunting but ak-47s and, and assault rifles are just to kill people that's all they're for then you feel okay in your neighborhood there listening to all those machine guns while you're unarmed or well, of, co of course not you know we have our, our rifles you know for hunting and stuff maybe you know in our in our business and stuff like that but we don't have ak-47s and things that are people killers that's what they are it's people killers Hmm. All right, David. Right. AFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio, the John and Ken Show. John Cobell's Ken Shambo here at uh, 647. It's day one of Fry the Menendai Yard Sale in Artesia, and uh, a guy has brought his snake to donate. Who are you? Chris Hayes. Where are you from? Long Beach. He's got a coffee can. He's got a coffee can marked Leslie Abramson in the uh, <laughs> holes on it. And uh, sure enough, there's a snake in there to buy some. Yes, it is. Small play time. You're, so you're, uh, you're not really donating your snake. Yeah, it's very died yesterday. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, how sad. Yeah. Well, yeah. too bad I wasn't a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a male or a female snake. This, and is, this is a female. And how do you tell? <laughs> you know, I, I joked during the commercial break that I'm more scared of snakes than guns. He's like unwinding it. It's like they're all wrapped up in a ball. I don't believe now. This, this is why it's a ball python. I get it. it it's it's so it's going to just jump out and like grab our necks. Now, can that thing kill anybody? Lawyer to grab your wallet. Throw it into the crowd. Can it kill anybody? No. You sure? Can I never even touch the snake? Can I touch it, or would he get upset? Is it upset right now because it stays in a ball? It's a little nervous. Well, it just lost its 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 mate yesterday. It's. You really want people to come buy that tomorrow? Anybody want to buy a snake? Do we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the guy with the beard, of course. <laughs> Uh, mm. Delicious. So how, much, uh, how much do snakes go on the retail market? Well, this is about a year old, so it's about $40, $50. $40, $50. It's got a small scar from a burn mark. Well, how did you do it? I didn't do it. Do you play with matches? <laughs> <laughs> Brings a snake with a burn mark on it. Ah, uh, jeez. Like All right, morning. well, listen, uh, we don't need a license to sell that, do we? Yeah, I'm sure. We want the animal control. Registration. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, the cops sticking right. in cars. Now, funny we have snakes. I'm going to do something even more dangerous and go near that snake. Go near this crowd. The gun crowd. This is yeah. the pro-gun crowd at the Insight oh, Let's frisk everybody Asia. first. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to propose something to you. Whoever wants to answer, just come right up to the microphone, okay? You guys, I guess a lot of you target hunters, sport hunters, deer hunters, whatever. I've got no problem with you. But could you do that without the assault weapons? And maybe we could come up with a way to get the assault weapons away from gang members or postal workers or the creeps who shoot up schoolyards. Why would you object to that? Whoever wants, okay. Okay, the gang bandits. Well, okay, the gang bandits aren't using assault weapons. They're using little kooky uh, Davis 22s and stuff like that. If you look, if you look at the TV every time the LAPD bus, big time gang, what do they get? A handful of them little throwaway guns. They're not using assault weapons. They do have some assault weapons. Four they percent. use them, but they have they have the intimidation factor. Four percent. Some of them talking about the last time they showed on TV that the cops busted a gang. What did they have? A couple of shotguns, a couple of pistols. You didn't see an M16. You didn't see an AK. Right. But what would it hurt you guys if they banned AK-47s? You got plenty of other guns to do your sport and, and target shooting. Well, the problem is they don't stop with AK-47s like in New Jersey. Even if you had a handgun owned by George Washington, that's still considered a concealed weapon. They don't stop. Don't you? Is there any compromise though that both sides? They don't compromise. To broker with the other well, side. Nobody the compromises. Safest owners of guns are the machine gun collectors. In Arizona and in the majority of the United States, you can own machine guns. And you, they've, there's only been one legal machine gun ever used in a crime. Now they can do the same thing with the assault weapons. Okay, thanks for your uh, input. I want to get some more of the calls because we've got a lot of people. Yeah, we've been waiting. speaking to people this hour who just don't understand the gun mentality, don't want to own them, and probably want to see them with guns. Uh, what? Sure, what's your name? Mark and Rebecca. Mark and Rebecca, sure. And could you say hi into the camera to them? Hi to Mark and Rebecca. <laughs> right on. Maria, Teresa, there we go.
Okay, and this is so I make sure I get to have the footage forever. I'm going to be recording from yesterday at Insight Shooting Range. This is me and John Cobelt, KFI, interviewing me. Okay, Mary, thanks for the call. Gee, we're still looking for somebody who thinks it's cruel and unusual punishment besides Ken. <laughs> Once again, you stand alone in Southern California. I'm proud of that. Uh, can you bring over that, that tattoo guy? Because he's another guy frightening me. There's always Where? a few people in a crowd. Where's the tattoo guy? Oh, there he is. He's over by the uh, oh, yeah. Hold blimp on. guy. Yeah, he's, he's watching he's to talking. see the blimp picture of the freeway. I, I can walk this far, right? I won't lose Yeah, you can go that far. Hey, tattoo man, come over oh, here. He's got a camera, uh, tattoo now, uh, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're really scary. Uh, you got one tattoo with skulls, cracks in their skulls. It says, punks destroy what? But Jesus saves. Oh, I, so it's a religious tattoo. Yeah, that's oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were like the devil. I'm. Yeah, you, it used to be. Uh, <laughs> now that that's Former Jesus. Devil. Wait, so hold it. These are very. His entire right arm is covered with tattoos. And okay, now the other side because I messed up on the recording. I got it all though. And play. One of these tattoos. You got a bird flying with a with a rose. You got Jesus Christ arising from the dead. I guess yep. is that over the city of New York? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You have like Jesus Christ hovering over the city of New York. Let's see. On your right arm, you got what's that? That's me with uh, Liberty spikes. Liberty spikes out of your head. Yep. What is that a hairstyle you had? Many moons ago. Yeah. Yeah. You're not embarrassed by this, are you, guess, sir? You get dates? I'm married. Where is your wife here? No, she's working. <laughs> <laughs> or is she tied up at home? Yeah, she's tied up at home. That's right. <laughs> uh, let me. Oh, you got one colorful one here. Now, do the color ones cost more? Yeah. Is that your wife, Jennifer? You got a bouquet of roses with Jennifer on it. She's a beauty. Yeah. Okay. How come you, do you have your wife tattooed on you anywhere? Like, I hey, know. Uh, please don't drop your pants. That's okay. That's all right. But you're harmless. You don't have a criminal record. I'm harmless. Absolutely. See, so you, you know, work anybody for that looks different, you contract. have to like interrogate. Isn't that, that your way? <laughs> Guy's got a few tattoos. You're gonna spend an hour with him. Now, wait a second. Let me take a poll of the crowd here. How many people thought this guy was scary because it was all of his tattoos? Oh, Nobody, huh? Trust me. All right. Okay, I'm a bigot. I'm a bigot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look around. They don't look that, that much different. <laughs> Where's that cop who wants to take us on a ride along in Watts? What? Did you say yes to that? Uh, I said I'd think about it. Can we bring the target range with us? Uh, <laughs> is that cop here? Did he take off? No, a cop uh, from the LAPD. He said, you have his card and address? Okay.